G'day everyone, Prep Aussie here. I hope you're all well in whatever part of the world you're watching this video. Today is Saturday, the 29th of September, and the time here, uh, 2018, and the time here is 09.30 Australian Eastern Standard Time. Uh, well, this is weekly news wrap up number three. <sighs> Unless you're living under a rock, and it's kind of amazing because, like, a lot of the population is actually living under a rock um, you might have missed a couple of very important things and if you haven't watched these things you need to watch them one is um, Trump's speech at the UN the second one is his for want of a better definition his monologue speech stroke speech uh, when he was involved in the sort of chairing the meeting at the UN and third is watch Brett Kavanaugh's uh, statement as regards to all this tomfoolery that's going on in uh, Washington you basically now if anyone's under the illusion that um, things are either a going to get better and they may they may very well get better but you need to understand that before things get better things have to get a lot worse and they are going to get a lot worse um, if you're under the illusion that you know Trump's a savior and he very well may be <clears throat> and I'm sort of backing that to get the world back into being a better place then great but uh, if you're thinking that it's all going to be finished in a couple of days then you're sadly disillusioned this is going to take years now two trains of thought here he needs Brett Kavanaugh on the bench to pass um, I suppose the term would be resolutions or laws as regards to treasonous people etc etc now has anybody out there thought what might happen if he doesn't get uh, nominated why am I saying that well where does that leave Trump? And the other thought there is, what happens if the Democrats somehow amazingly, I don't think it's going to happen, but amazingly take the Senate? Because, you know, you hope that people watching that Brett Kavanaugh thing yesterday realise just who these people are. I would have believed that somebody out there in America, people out there in America would have listened to that and gone, what are these people are just crazy. What is going on in this country? And that's what should be said and that's what should quite rightly be said. But what happens if Trump doesn't get Kavanaugh nominated and he loses the midterms? Have you thought about that? What would you do if you were trying to take over, take back the country? What would you be left with? Well, there is only one final thing that Trump could do, and that's martial law. So after all of this stuff that's going on, if their backup plan is martial law, it has to be, because there's no other way they're obviously trying to do it the legal way. So what happens if the legal way fails? What are you left with? Well, you have to start thinking about taking back the country by force. Which in turn would mean a civil war. Because if you can't do it legally and prove to people that this is what's going on 
then what are you left with? You, you're going to have to take the country back by force, which would mean that, um, you know, you're going to divide the country in two, basically. So it's not looking good. Whichever way you want to think about it, it's not looking good. Now, <clears throat> it's hoped, and we should all hope this, that the Dems don't take the midterm elections. If the midterm elections are won by the Democrats, the man, I reckon one week after that, the shit is going to hit the fan. Because you're dealing with people who are ideologically corrupt. And you only had to look at that process yesterday just to see how corrupt it has become. Um, it's kind of interesting to me as an outsider looking in that and this is the same with everywhere now, I, I would guess. This isn't about being an elected member of parliament anymore. It's all about power. And people's perception of uh, not giving away that power. And, you know, the, the, the obvious third thing to that is, is that the people no longer have the power. We no longer have the power in, in government as people. It's run by either foreign entities, corrupt politicians, corrupt businessmen. You know, it, it, it's so far removed from what it's actually supposed to be achieving that it's not even, it's not even a political reality anymore. And as I've said before, dozens and dozens of Australians now won't vote We've ne we now had the lowest turnout ever in voting at that Super Sunday, Saturday election or whatever it was. Ever. The lowest ever. Like people just in droves just went not voting. I'd rather get a $20 fine. Obviously, if they want people to vote or they're going to force people to vote, then they'll put that fine up to something like $5,000 if you don't vote. But, you know, then you're just left with a bunch of conscientious objectors who just walk in, get their name ticked off and leave. And then the fraudsters get involved and throw a shitload of Labor Party votes or whoever they want to get into party. So we're in, we're in a fight, ideologically, for the whole world here. And you might be sitting here in Australia going, it means fuck all to me what happens in America. Well, I'm sorry, but I proved to you the other day that the Australian government got involved in the uh, American presidential process. So this, this, is, this is a massive myriad of spider's webs. Massive myriad of spider webs. If you're watching this, you, you kind of need to start stepping up as well because this is getting really serious. Really serious. Like, I've really started to prep up a lot now. You know, making sure my cars are full of petrol. You know, before I was a bit blase about it. Not now. The two things, two things I want to point out, and you need, if you haven't watched... President Trump's speech at the UN, you need to watch it and you need to listen to it. Forget about all the rhetoric. Listen to what he's saying. It's probably the most bull-kicking speech ever given at the UN. And secondly, you need to listen to the monologue he gave when he was the president of the UN Security Council. Because, man, I've never seen anything in politics as, most, as powerful as that. He literally sat there across from the Chinese delegate and said, you have been interfering in our elections 
and you are going to stop it. Like to his face, to the Chinese. And he's, the Chinese guy, they put the camera on him and he's sitting there going, bloody hell, really? In front of everyone you're saying that? So the battle lines are 100% drawn, 100% drawn. And if you needed confirmation of that, you need to watch his speech at the UN because it was a war cry. It was a declaration of war against those other countries. And he's not joking. Why would you come out at the UN and say that sort of stuff? Not once, but twice. So all these years of peace and you know whatever we've had peace whether it's been peace by proxy because of the filthy rotten scumbags that have been running the world but those days are gone and those days are over and the only way to take back the US in my opinion moving forward is by force he's going to try to do it the right way etc etc and look everything he's tried so far looks like it's failed to me the big the big one's going to be if he wins the midterm elections if they don't win the midterms folks it's all over So, you know, if you're sitting there thinking, oh, yeah, well, you know, they've got it under control. Their control mechanism is they're starting to plan for plan B. They've got plan A, which is to take over the Supreme Court, take over the justice of America, etc., etc. Their plan B is a full-style military takeover for want of a better term. And obviously a civil war in America. Sad to say, but I can't see it happening any other way. And countries like Australia will be left floundering at that time. And while America is fighting within itself, countries like Australia will become open to take over by, or invasion, if for want of a better term, by the Russian and the Chinese and Indonesia. Did you know that Indonesia has more people in their paratroop regiment than we have in our whole Australian army? think about that so you know it all sounds a bit dire but that's the reality if America goes into civil war then America will turn in on itself and forget the rest of the world and will obviously get left to fight its war and may even be invaded by the Chinese and the Russians. Who knows? But the big worry is, is the South Pacific seas where we are. And countries just coming in and taking it over like China is already trying to do. <clears throat> so look, it's not much of a weekly news wrap up but that's reality. And you all need to start processing in your minds for that reality. Because you're running out of time and you're running out of weeks. You literally got weeks now. 40 days or something. But like I said, I said the 9th of October, 12th, 9th to the 10th of October next week is a big cleansing week. So let's see what happens then, and we'll move on from there. 
All right, folks. Prayer time. Okay, verse of the day. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. Wow, that's pretty good. And as always, folks, we'll finish with the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. All right, folks. God bless. Prep out.